Spike Island lies across the water from Cove in Cork Harbour. Students stay on the island during the week and have the option to return by ferry to the mainland for the weekend. The Spike Island Field School is divided into lectures and practical excavation work. During this time there is a daily routine very similar to that in a commercial archaeological setting. We excavate from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. with two um, short breaks during the day. Uh, and then we gather again after our evening meal from 6.30 to uh, 8 o'clock, uh, where we do some analyses of material that we would have retrieved during the day. Students from all over the world, including the United States and Canada, have joined this year's excavation. I'm Jessie Munkittrick. I'm from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. Both on my mom and dad's side, it's not totally, completely Irish, but uh, Irish ancestry, yeah, which is quite exciting to be here. <laughs> I came personally for the bioarchaeology, which is the study of human remains, but there's also really interesting things that I'd never really thought about before. We're looking in the 1800s prison, but also the the one from the kind of late 1900s, early 20th century, so it's kind of a bit of everything. But I don't know if there's ever been music played in a punishment block before, so it was kind of an interesting experience in that way. It was interesting at first, but it's come to be really home. It's a bit secluded, so you it's weird because you can hear people out in Cork talking and whatnot. We've been accused of being too loud sometimes, but really it's you can hear everything, but you walk around and you kind of feel more rural and secluded, and it's, it's a really interesting experience that I've never had before. So the Mitchell cell, is there a Mitchell cell? Or is there it? is, it's in the punishment block there behind us. Well, for 30 people to live on a, an uninhabited island is logistically challenging. Um, now we were very lucky in that we had a, a, an infrastructure in terms of a place to live um, so, uh, and we lived in what was the old administration block of the 20th century prison so where the, the governor's office was and the various offices where people were uh, processed in terms of having to go to court and so on. The, the biggest problem for us was in terms of, of feeding 30 people uh, five or six days a week because uh, the kitchens uh, of the 20th century prison had been removed. So um, the way that worked was that um, luckily there are boats that go many times a day. Um, so our uh, groceries for our breakfast and lunch were, were brought in every day and we looked after ourselves in terms of we did have a small kitchenette uh, where we could make our breakfast and a packed lunch. And then our evening meal was brought um, as a takeaway basically from a restaurant in Cove on a daily basis. So that would be uh, delivered to the dock at about four o'clock every day, brought up to, uh, the, there is a small cafeteria on the island. It doesn't have any cooking facilities, but it does have tables where people could eat. Uh, and there would be, um, our, our takeaway would be delivered there every day. Um, so it, it, there was no great hardship involved in living on this island. It was actually quite comfortable. We had a team of 30 people in total uh, for the 2013 season on Spike Island. And logistically, working on an island presents all kinds of difficulties that working on, if you like, a mainland site do not. In the mainland, you can live at home, drive up to the site and so on. Um, here we had to, we lived on the island and we lived in the prison, which was a very interesting experience in itself. Even in terms of our day, we, we began to become... Uh, well, I suppose everybody has a routine in their lives anyway, uh, but our routine involved locking doors and unlocking doors. So we got a sense of what it was like to be in a prison now in a very privileged, um, comfortable surroundings in comparison to what it would have been like to be a prisoner there. But um, we, we did have to lock ourselves in in the evenings to unlock the prison in the mornings. We often ran up the flag in the morning just to show that there was life in the prison and that was all a very interesting experience. And 
you know, from, from our perspective, that was particularly useful because in our project, we're trying to understand the lived experience, what it was like on a day-to-day -day basis for the prisoners who were incarcerated there in the 19th century. So just to have a sense of what it's like to, to live within a relatively confined space. Now, remembering that we lived in very comfortable circumstances in comparison. That ha was interesting in itself. And um, one of the, the uh, things that we did w was where a, a small group of us volunteered to follow the 1848 prison diet, just, just for one day, just to see what that would be like. This morning we had a porridge stir about made with rice and um, oatmeal, which is what was specified. Now we were supposed to have a quart, we each had a bowl that's about half a pint, which is a lot less than a quart. Uh, and then for the main meal, which is in the middle of the day, you're supposed to eat, or what was available was a pound of bread and a pound of brown bread and three quarters of a pint of milk. And then our evening meal would be half. Um, pound of bread and half a pint of milk. And th that was the diet six days a week. And that was a, a very interesting experience in itself, just in terms of the blandness of the diet. It consisted of bread, lots of bread and lots of milk, uh, things that we might not normally eat in large quantities as we did there. Um, but from the perspective of knowing that this prison had opened during the uh, Great Famine when people were starving outside, it was very interesting to see that if you did have the 1848 prison diet, your, your stomach was certainly full. You weren't starving or hungry by any means. Now, the diet was bland and you would over time become malnourished because it was inadequate, just bread and milk on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with meat and vegetables one day a week, and that was on Sundays. But um, I think th for us it was a real privilege to, to live on Spike Island, to live within the prison, and to have an opportunity to uh, perhaps gain an insight into um, what being incarcerated there might be like. Oh my God, I think Stephen has possibly the best reaction. Uh, it's been amazing. I've got to do a lot of different things. Uh, we've done levels, pre-excavation grids, drawings, uh, examining finds, making contacts, bags and sheets and all the paperwork. My mic. I really like Cork. We uh, went and visited UCC, some of the Irish students showed me around, and I thought it was beautiful. Really nice campus, buildings were great. And uh, the programs sound really amazing too. And then Cork itself, really nice place, manageable, and there's lots to do though. Great pubs, great nightlife. Coming up in episode 4, we take a detailed look at the punishment block.